So, so Rupert, again today, Russian Russia is saying they are retreating from the southern city of Kherson, the important city of, of Kherson, and Ukrainians are saying, well, they will be sure, they'll believe that when they see it. They're right to be cautious, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, inevitably, there's a bit of there's a bit of mind games going on, um, and you know, I think Kiev are very sensible not to believe anything from the Russians, um, so they'll wish to act with caution, but equally. Um, we know the Ukrainians very wisely are very good at their own operational security. So, so even if they are confident that the Russians really are withdrawing, retreating, they will very properly wish to be quite cautious in in what they say publicly at this stage. Yeah, it was interesting yesterday, wasn't it, to see the president of the United States, Joe Biden, in that that uh, that midterm news conference with the results still coming in, where he said the uh, the the news of Russia pulling back from Kherson was in line with. America's understanding. He said that had been their understanding on the basis, no doubt, of intelligence for some time. He must surely be confident of that to to say such a thing so publicly. Yeah, I mean, it certainly feels that way, doesn't it? You know, the, the Ukrainians have done a, a pretty extraordinary job down in Kherson since August. So they didn't want to fight into the city. You know, city battles are hugely destructive. It's their city, causes a great many civilian casualties and indeed uh, among their fighters. So they've been very smart in, ter in terms of how they've isolated the city. They've made it harder and harder for the Russians to operate there by cutting off their logistics, going after their concentration areas. So, so this isn't, you know, this is this is the result of months and months of hard graft by the Ukrainians, mm. uh, and the Ukrainians won't want to. They won't want to rush the the final stages into the city. Can you just explain to us the the military thinking behind the reports we're now seeing of Russians? Just laying mines, laying mines well all over the place in in streets of and around a Kherson, in the sewers, well you name it. They seem to be mining it. What's the what's the military reasoning here? Well, I mean, firstly, we should we should be clear that is that is not appropriate behaviour. You know, to give up a city in this manner uh, and then weaponize it essentially because there are still civilians there. Uh, that that is you know deeply ir deeply irresponsible. But we shouldn't be surprised that the Russians are doing that. Um, I, I experienced that with with ISIS, with Daesh in in Mosul and Raqqa. It is it is you know horrific behaviour, but but this is one of the reasons why the Ukrainians will want to be very very cautious. Of course, what the Russians are trying to do, they they appear to be giving up the city, but they will want to to leave behind a present, if you like, for the Ukrainians mm. to make it very hard for the Ukrainians to exploit this victory and consolidate uh, the city. Yeah. And that's why they'll be leaving behind potentially sleeper cells as well, but but an expectation of leaving booby traps, mines, call it what you like. One of the suggestions, we put, you'll know better than me, is that they make the, the city dangerous in that way. I think the Ukrainians have used the phrase turning Kherson into a city of death and then retreat to the eastern side of the Dnipro River and carry on a bombard bombardment from there, which is I know, a, a kind of warfare that they could sustain for a while. Yes, I mean, I think again, we need to be really careful. Careful. This is a this is a significant moment in the war. There's no question about it, so long as it is real. But but we shouldn't get over excited. You know, the Ukrainians will have to fight their way into into the city. There will still be, you know, there will be stay behind elements. They'll have to secure the city, and then they're then they're presented with a very significant ob obstacle, the Dnipro River, and and they'll have to be they'll be thinking about how they kind of exploit beyond beyond that. Mm. Um, so there's a very long way way to go. I mean, I've heard some commentators beginning to speculate about, you know, time scale for when the, this war comes to a conclusion. I, I would treat any speculation on those lines with a huge dose of salt. This is a this is a a battle of wills between the Russians and the Ukrainians, and and who knows how long it will last. But but this is a very very positive step by the Ukrainians, and, and let's not kid ourselves. It's a huge defeat for the Russians. Yeah, but looking at it for a moment through a a much wider wider lens, I mentioned the midterm elections in America a moment a moment ago, and we saw that the Republican side they have not fared as well as they hoped and imagined that they would. Now some Republicans, not all, but some Republicans have been saying that what they want to do is slow down or cut off the supply of of funds and support for for Ukraine. I wonder if if in in Kyiv President Zelensky may look at those American results with some relief on that account. Yes, I mean I can, I can possibly comment on President Zelensky's view of the of the midterms, but I think you are right. You know, what is really important for President Zelensky and indeed for all of us who believe in what the Ukrainians are doing, the international community stay unified, lockstep 
with uh, President Zelensky and the Ukrainian people. Uh, and, you know, if the midterms have helped that, then that must be a good thing, because inevitably there's, you know, there is, you know, what, what right do we to have to, to have war weariness? But there's a sense of weariness, isn't there, already about Ukraine? Yeah. Uh, you know, everyone's going through the cost of living crisis so, and we're committing, we're committing to the Ukraine uh, fight and so you know that the, the 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 more that they can maintain momentum the easier it is to keep together that that international support and yeah. of course th if i may this this comes at the moment just as we're going into winter where we had all assumed you know typically progress slows down through the winter so it's it's really significant to achieve a victory like this you know, at the front at the front end of the winter. And speaking of, of international support, I mean, I mentioned of looking at it through a wide angle lens. Now, look, looking at it through a, a crystal ball, well, it's not that far ahead. Before the G7 summit in Bali, and Joe Biden, he's going to go. Putin is not going to go, but a, a number of senior important world leaders are going to go. And clearly, on the table, they're going to be looking at the, the the potential nuclear threat posed by Russia in this war. Yeah, look, you know, it, it was it was Putin who put the nuclear card on the table. You know, he he's waved it around through the course of of the months in a highly irresponsible manner. You know, the you know nuclear weapons should never be threatened lightly. You know, they are the ultimate deterrent. That's the whole point of them. Um, I mean, it is interesting in, in recent weeks. You know, President Putin appears to have downplayed his his narrative around around nuclear, uh, and and we should applaud that quietly. We should be pleased by that. I guess is the is the is the better term. Yeah. And I think we should you know the 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 less that is said about the nuclear element, uh, the the better. Yeah, although although it's it's it is you know unhappily a compelling subject. We were talking a little earlier on, Rupert, on the program about about yes the nuclear the nuclear threat but also the possibility of a of an of an EMP an electromagnetic pulse weapon being used which is again another another worrying threat yeah you know and, and you know the russians we've seen this in in georgia and elsewhere the you know the russians are very capable of using really really unpleasant weapons thermobaric weapons and 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 the like um and you know we we have to hope that that he doesn't use those sort of those sort of weapons um you know it is interesting you know, general Sorovkin, who who i came across back in syrian days um you know he was brought in to stabilize the war he hasn't managed to do so very early in his tenure it's straight into an into an into another into another defeat um but but at least you know he does appear to be one hopes operating in a, in a slightly more disciplined manner you know, rather than just fighting to the to the last man, you know, he's gone to the defence minister Shoigu and said, "I yeah, I think we should we should fall back." That that is actually quite a rational military thing to do. Mm, yeah, I mean, you mentioned this Russian commander; he does have a record of some brutality, doesn't he? Yeah, he does absolutely. As I say, you know, we we came across him uh, in my counter ISIS days in in Syria. He was actually a very professional general to do business with uh, to to give him his credit. But equally, he has demonstrated. Like like so many Russians, a a very very ruthless uh, element to him, um, and so you know we should continue to give the Ukrainians every support we can because you know we shouldn't kid ourselves. This is this is a really significant defeat for the Russians. They're third after Kiev and and, and Kharkiv, but but there's a long way to go. 